Uh, good evening. Um, yes, I'd, I'd like to welcome you all also on behalf of the uh, Cancer Institute. Uh, this uh, series of presentations is uh, designed to bring forward uh, provocative topics, as we've certainly heard today from Dr. Uh, uh, Davis, a very interesting talk that provides uh, uh, much to think about in terms of uh, cell phone use. I, I just wanted to uh, just take uh, two or three minutes to touch on some of the uh, epidemiologic considerations in studying uh, uh, this association. Um, this is uh, uh, this is basically the the conundrum I think that uh, Deborah uh, confronted us with at the beginning of her talk. That uh, there is at this point uh, little epidemiologic evidence to support these associations, and she's absolutely correct that that does not necessarily mean that there are no associations, but I think we can do a better job in epidemiology to sort this out, as I'll touch on in a few minutes. So this slide just simply shows that uh, the number of subscribers in millions, as we all know, of course, is uh, increasing dramatically, uh, beginning roughly in the, the late 90s, middle 90s to late 90s with more common cell phone use and it just keeps uh, going up and up. And uh, on the bottom part of the slide is the, uh, the death rate from uh, 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 brain cancer, uh, which uh, to this point in time is really showing no increase at all. Now, as Deborah pointed out, this doesn't by any means uh, refute the possibility uh, that there is an association. But as of this time, there really is, uh, there's th these kinds of associations aren't clear from, uh, from, from this type of presentation. And this just simply shows the same by age category. So uh, for brain cancer, no uh, uh, clear evidence. Uh, Deborah showed data on, on uh, parotid gland cancer from Israel, and that's a interesting that the rates are increasing there, whether that's related to cell phone use, is a, that's a hypothesis that's, uh, that's being evaluated. Um, just to, to mention briefly uh, two of the uh, more recent uh, studies, epidemiologic studies on brain cancer, just to give you a feel for how these uh, studies operate. Uh, this study carried out by uh, Hardell in uh, Scandinavia uh, studied some 350 brain cancer cases and uh, two control groups and identified uh, that the case group uh, on average reported more uh, use of uh, mobile phones uh, prior to the development of their disease. So you can see these uh, data uh, roughly showing a two and a half fold increase in risk for uh, uh, subjects who used uh, cell phones for greater than 10 years or with a greater than 10 years since they first started using uh, cell phones, and also higher risks in those that were using uh, cell phones for, uh, for the longest or the, uh, the greatest amount of time, greater than 2,000 hours in this study. So that's, uh, uh, that study concluded that there is an association. Uh, and then there's a second large study, and we'll hear a little more about this from the next speaker, the Interphone study that um, included some 2,700, uh, well, actually, five, more than 5,000 brain cancer cases and split into these two uh, uh, most common forms of, uh, of uh, brain cancer. Uh, and this study was carried out in, in, in 13 countries. Overall, in this much, much larger study, there was no association found um, with brain cancer. And, and the authors concluded from their data that uh, uh, there was no clear evidence from the study of, of an association, although they did find uh, what they referred to as possible effects in long-term heavy users. And this uh, particular category where you would probably, if there was an effect, you'd probably expect to see it there first. Uh, so perhaps that's a signal indeed, even in this large overly, uh, over, overall negative study that uh, something may be going on. So. The, um, so these case control studies that have been carried out, and there have been others, uh, but these two kind of typify the, uh, the spectrum. Um, the, the way these studies are done is people are interviewed uh, after they've developed disease. So the cases have brain cancer in this example, and the controls don't. And people are asked to report about details of their prior use of, uh, of phones. 
And as you can imagine, uh, this type of investigation does uh, uh, suffer the criticism that people who have a disease may have different perceptions. They have, may have more accurate perceptions for that matter, or less accurate, but different perceptions of uh, what actually went on in their history than a person who didn't have a disease. Um, so not to say that's the case, but this is a, a concern with case control studies. So I think from, uh, um, uh, as an epidemiologist, I think what's needed are uh, prospective studies where uh, uh, people are enrolled into, into a study uh, during a period when they're healthy and when uh, uh, phone use can be ascertained in an unbiased fashion. And then these people should be followed in time to determine what their disease outcomes are. Um, and I believe Deborah has also advocated for this approach. So I think that would go a long ways towards uh, resolving some of these questions. Um, as I said, there's no apparent trend of increasing risk. Uh, glucose, the, the findings on glucose metabolism kind of broke through a uh, sort of a barrier that uh, this uh, cell phones don't really do anything because these are human studies and it does show physiologic effects in the brain. Uh, there's, and that seems to be fairly convincing evidence. Doesn't mean that glucose metabolism equals brain cancer, but it is a, a sign that uh, there are changes occurring. So this is uh, of concern. Um, and the, 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 there have been uh, uh, mechanistic studies that have looked at classic um, uh, changes that one would expect in cells exposed to a carcinogen, for example, the, the fracturing of a chromosome. Uh, and these studies have not uh, shown associations with ra uh, radiofrequency radiation. So there's there's still a lot of questions, um, and I think uh, Dr. Davis did an excellent job of showing you the, some of the very new and very provocative information that's coming forward um, that now needs to be uh, carried to, to, uh, to further studies to, uh, to get a much better handle on what's actually going on. So that's kind of the, the science and I guess more the epidemiology side of it. I guess I would just want to say uh, just a, a thought, I don't have a final opinion on this, but I think uh, just the thought to throw out to you about uh, policy. When, when, when does a, a government that's uh, acting in our best interest step in and make changes? How, how strong does that evidence have to be that there's, uh, that there's something going on? And uh, I'm not going to try to answer that question, but I think it's, it's something worth thinking about uh, in a situation where there is a, a, a cause to, to be concerned about these issues, but there's still a great deal of uncertainty about whether they're real or not. So.